ओम ज्ञान we should have a basis of understanding in Prabhupada's books and I'd cited the example of myself in that I'd read the Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita Prabhupada's, with Prabhupada's commentary six times before I started extensively reading other books. So there seems to have been some misunderstanding that I was saying that everyone should read all of Prabhupada's books six times before reading other books, but not necessarily so, but once or twice at least, and then go on reading Prabhupada's books even when you read others. And be discriminating and discriminatory in which we read. That beginner's guide to Krishna Consciousness which I made, that could be read at, at any stage and then in the beginning. And then, if, for instance, if we're doing a Bhakti Shastri study course, then we could study the course materials also, which are to help us understand Prabhupada's books, we hope. Srila <coughs> Prabhupada Lelamrita books about Prabhupada. They can also be read. But our basis should, as followers of Prabhupada, we should have a basis in understanding these books. So are there any more questions? Please. Yeah. Good question. One is, now, day-to-day life, what is the importance of uh, preaching? And, uh, and, uh, to which extent? <laughs> In our day-to-day life, what is the importance of preaching and to what extent? Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Jari Deko Tari Koha Krishna Upadesh. Whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Who's doing that? That means always and everywhere, practically. So to what extent means there's no limit, unlimited. In our day-to-day life, well, some people's day-to-day life is different to others. Day-to-day, when we hear day-to-day life, that gives the impression of the regular grind in material life. I don't know how you're going to translate that. But the normal, miserable life that people lead in which trying to earn some money. So in that condition it it may be more difficult because those those who are living in an ISKCON ashram then their their whole life is centered around preaching. At least the ashram is supposed to be centered around preaching. So that facilitates that. Whereas the day-to-day life of someone who's working in an office or a factory or a shop or whatever is based around producing goods and earning money. So they don't want, the employer doesn't want you to introduce anything else which might disturb the activity for which you're employed for which means making him money. So one has to be a little subtle in one's preaching activities. I've been asked this many times, how can we remember Krishna at the workplace? So I've suggested in your office you might hang some picture of Krishna or put on your table or on your computer wallpaper. You, know, you can read in your lunchtime Bhagavad Gita as it is and then people may ask what that is. And you can tell them. You can distribute prasad daily If we have a desire to do so, we can preach in any circumstances, although many circumstances are not favorable for doing so. That's a general answer. How to apply it in your life, you have to see. If there's a will, there's a way. Do you understand that? If there's a will, there's a way. If we desire, then Krishna will... Reveal to us how to fulfill that desire. 
ইচ্ছা থাকলে উপায় হয় ইন বেঙ্গলি দেশ এ ডিজায়ার দেশ এ দেশ এ ওয়ে টু ফুলফিল দ্যাট সিনসেরিটি মিনস অন্যাভিলাষিতা শূন্যম জ্ঞান কামাদ্যনাভৃতমানুকুলেন কৃষ্ণানুশীলন ভক্তি উত্তম টু কলটিভেট দ্য স্পিরিট অফ সেলফলেসনেস ইন ডিভোশনাল সার্ভিস দ্যাট আই এম নট ডুইং ইট ফর এনি পার্সোনাল ইন্টেনশন only for the pleasure of krishna that is sincerity we may have so many desires material desires but we should means we but we don't cultivate those desires due to association with material energy since time immemorial we have so many residual material desires but we should not cultivate them we should cultivate the desire to surrender to krishna and do everything for his pleasure only <coughs> krishna consciousness means war on maya to cultivate the desire to only be krishna conscious to do everything for his pleasure that means doing many things which normal people consider normal we don't watch tv go to cinema go to parties with materialistic people only cultivate the desire to be krishna conscious which means associating with devotees of similar nature with similar desire this is considered fanaticism by some but krishna says ma me kam sharanam vrata surrender to me only nothing else so to accept krishna's proposal that i am meant for you only that is sincerity and to pretend to be doing that but actually cultivating all kinds of others desires that is insincerity sincerity means to hear bhagavad gita as arjuna heard it sarvam etad ritang manye yang mang vadasi keshava i accept everything you say as fact <coughs> yeah then in our temple we are offering to the deities only breakfast and at evening milk and puris we are in we are in lack of pujaris what to do well i would have said don't go ahead and install the deities if you're not ready not only i would have said but probably said there should be at least 12 brahman initiates in a temple before you install deities but anyway you've gone ahead and done it now so engage there are so many in lubliana where you're from there are so many brahmin initiated devotees so engage them or if they don't want to do service they just want to hang the thread on their shoulders and not do the service then preach and make more devotees <laughs> increase even increase this uh, shortage of pujaris means what one even one pujari can do all the offerings it's not impossible if there's a will there's a way we have the standard that first 
Initiate devotees are worshipping. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think, but according to Srila Prabhupada, it should not be done. Not only according to Srila Prabhupada, but according to all the acharyas in the sampradaya. Brahmin initiate devotees are meant for deity worship. How to overcome fear about the future? Surrender to Krishna. Krishna will look after us. There is no fear. Who will look after me when I am old? Well, who is looking after you now? You think you are looking after yourself? Now I am looking after myself, but later I will need someone to look No. Krishna will look after Maro bi rako bi jau icha toha nitta dasa prati na tua adhika. Kill me or protect me according to your desire. I'm your eternal surrendered devotee, and you can do whatever you like with me. That's your right. Krishna will look after us. Krishna is feeding the elephants in the jungle. He cannot feed you. He's feeding the demons. He won't feed his devotees. We should fear falling from Krishna consciousness. That should be our only fear. Fear of Maya. Fear of Maya is healthy. The six Goswamis had written much about Raga Nuga, but we don't follow them due to the present lack of what? Purity and eligibility. Are they meant for the jivas who are living in the future in the most manifested golden age later in the predicted 10,000 years? Who said we're not following the six Goswamis? Huh? We don't follow about Raghunuga. What makes you think we're not following about Raghunuga Bhakti? No, we, we're, the vidhi we're following is meant to lead to rag only. We're not aiming for Vaikuntha. We're following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam bhaja gadisha kamaya. Rama janmani janmani shrei bhavatad bhaktir haitu kitvai. This is a misconception that we that in Iskon we're we're not. It's not Raganuga. It's all meant for that. In course of time, everything will be revealed. But our aim is not Vidhi Bhakti leads to Lakshmi Narayan in Vaikuntha. So our Acharyas have given Rupa Goswami has given Vidhi, which leads to Rag, and we're. We're being the, the whole Sankirtan movement, the chanting and dancing, is one of uh, expression of natural affection for Krishna. So it's a misconception that we're Iskon is a movement of Vaidhi Bhakti. Well, it's not a misconception; it's true, but it's it's not the mission of ISKCON to, to only, or, or rather let's say that those rules and regulations are meant to give rise to natural spontaneous affection to Krishna. Which we can see that's manifest in so many devotees. Just like here in Mayapur, very strictly following all the regulations of deity worship for so many years, Pankajangri and Jananivas Prabhu. You think there's no rag? They're just following out of some duty? There's no, there's no attachment? What do you think? Externally, you see, rag is a matter of the heart. It's not for external display. Those. Those who go around telling everybody, ladies and gentlemen, I am a Premi Bhakta. You can all be almost sure they're not Premi Bhaktas. Those who are announcing it, they're not following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he clearly said that 
This is an internal matter. Externally one goes on following the rules and regulations. But internally one's attachment for Krishna develops. That is natural. So there's an example. These two devotees who are serving the Lord, the deities, by rules and regulations, and not just out of duty. If it was just some some chore, you know what the word chore means? Chore means some, in English it means a boring job. If it was just something they were doing so they, they, they could get their meals, they wouldn't have stayed here. But they've stayed for, for 35 years through floods and riots and everything. So there's no... You think they're just doing it because they have, they have no other way to get the rice and chapatis? There's no attachment for the Lord. They're dressing the Lord so beautifully. They're serving Him so dedicatedly. There's no attachment. Certainly there is. In the Nectar of Instruction, text 6, purport, page 63 of some editions, Srila Prabhupada writes, every, de every devotee should be ready to take instructions from a superior Vaishnava, and a superior Vaishnava must be ready to help inferior Vaishnavas in all respects. One is superior or inferior according to his development in Krishna consciousness. It seems to me very difficult to distinguish my Krishna consciousness in comparison to others because of the influence of false ego generally. Therefore, I noticed. noticed we distinguish between inferior and superior. How long is one in the movement initiated? What managerial responsibilities he has in position or how much service he has done in the past? Although these considerations have their place in Vaishnava etiquette, Srila Prabhupada does not mention them in Nectar of Instruction. What should be the right understanding? How can I reliably distinguish and recognize the development of Krishna consciousness in different Vaishnavas without committing offenses to judge devotees. Yeah, this is an important point. It's not simply by one's number of years in Krishna consciousness or managerial position. Although service done, that, that's quite some... that's some indicator. That should be considered, because it's not an ordinary thing to serve Krishna, and especially in, in a very wonderful way. Just like I was giving the example of Pankajangari and Jananivas Prabhus, to, to have performed so much service over so many years indicates... I'm just giving them as an example, there are so many devotees. But that indicates that they are serious in their service to Krishna and getting the mercy from him to be able to do so. So that's an indicator. How can we tell? Well, there are general symptoms and we'll have to pray to Krishna to reveal if someone is fit to guide us. General symptoms are there. The... Uh, for instance, there are the descriptions of bhava bhakti, that that kshantir uh, avyarta kaladvam, that one is tolerant of different conditions. One goes on serving Krishna in all circumstances. He doesn't like to waste time; likes to spend all his time in the service of the Lord. He doesn't have holidays from Krishna consciousness so weekend break or something like this doesn't expect or doesn't even like to be praised for his service it is attached to glorifying the Lord the symptoms are there so we can see and we, we can take some time also to see because if we're afraid someone's going to cheat us or misuse us. So we can take some time and then gradually as our faith develops in a relationship we can 
commit ourselves more and more. Or it may be that from the very beginning our faith is there. That may be also. If we are more simple. If we are simple we can gain faith very quickly. But we may also be cheated very easily. <laughs> In the temple we don't get time to hear lectures. Is it proper to hear lectures while lying down when we are tired? There are a lot of chances we'll fall asleep. What to do to hear more? We don't get the time to hear lectures, but that's what that's practically the most important purpose of the t of the temple. Living in the temple so that we can hear about Krishna, hearing and chanting. So if you don't get time to hear lectures, then what's the temple for? We build the building and we're keeping it clean and we're collecting money to maintain it and we're. And then what's the difference between that and just a house that we all live in? The very purpose of the temple is to hear and chant about Krishna. If the only time we have to hear lectures is when we're asleep, then... <laughs> that's not so good. You have to adjust your schedule. Shravana Kirtana Koro anukam, oshata pachala chari. Go on hearing and chanting always. Give up useless talks. That's what Prabhupada was told once when he was, when Prabhupada said once when he was told the bodies don't have time to read that they should just give up talking nonsense and then they'll have so much time. In Krishna conscious mind and body, do not cooperate with me. How do I solve this problem? Well. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes what is that? Indriyani prani ahur indriyabhya parang manaha manasas tu para budhe yo budhe paratas tu saha. There's a hierarchy. The senses, the mind, the intelligence, and the soul. So if the mind and the body say, don't cooperate with me, and that means that you, you're not using the intelligence to take charge. You're being driven by the senses. So that Krishna explains, Jahi Shatrung Mahabaho. Overcome this enemy in the form of lust by understanding the soul to be transcendental to the mind, body and even mundane intelligence. We, we should conquer the pushing of the mind and the body. Otherwise we are like, the, uh, we're like an animal. The animal is under the control of his body and bodily demands and mental demands. So, Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindya, one has to fix the mind of Krishna. Make our, make our goal clear, fix our goal in our minds that we want to be Krishna conscious and then everything else will follow. That means we have to be prepared to make some sacrifices. If we think, I want to be Krishna conscious, but I also like to sleep until 10 o'clock every morning. And you have to choose. What do you want? To be Krishna conscious or sleeping late? Every, because the two things don't go together. So one disciplines the mind and body by accepting the rules and regulations of Bhakti Yoga. <coughs> You can't be Krishna conscious and indulge in sense gratification at the same time. One has to accept the discipline. By accepting the rules and regulations of Bhakti Yoga, one automatically becomes disciplined in the mind and body. Automatically, we start to overcome them. We may feel tired and sick, and this, but still we have to rise early. Engage in hearing and chanting. This way we overcome the pushings of the mind and the body. It's a gradual process. Is it necessary to have good educational qualification to preach to the so-called higher class men in society? I asked the same question to one devotee and that devotee said that yes, it is necessary. And he gave the example of our devotees who have educational qualifications in their preaching nicely. And when I gave the example of our previous acharyas and some of our ISKCON gurus, 
who do not have good mundane qualification but they are preaching widely, then he said we are not as elevated as them. And some things, some devotees say that we should not preach as strongly as Srila Prabhupada, we are not on his level. How to understand these points? Some devotees in their lectures often quote this. Oh, that's another question. Hmm. Well, we're not as elevated as them. Those who are preaching Krishna consciousness without educational, mundane educational qualifications. Well, philosophically, it's a mistake to think that there is any mundane qualification necessary to practice or preach Krishna consciousness. The example is there of Gorki Das Babaji Maharaj. These ex- we say we may say we're not as elevated as them, but they are acharyas, who are their life is meant. It's in teaching us by their activities. So there are many cases. You may say, well, we're not as elevated as the gurus in Iskon, but. The gurus in Iskon were three-month brahmacharis at one time also. By sticking to the process, they became able to do what they're able to do now. Now certainly for, a, for certain types of specialized preaching, some kind of qualification is necessary. For instance, if we want to... Uh, if we want to discuss about, about evolutionary theory by, for instance, discussing about theories of genetic coding, then we'll have to understand what those theories are. One can get that such qualifications by going to university and getting them, or one can study them independently also. If one has some background, for instance, in medicine or microbiology, that would be more helpful for understanding that that is a specialized form of preaching if one has such a qualification then he can think of preaching in that specialized manner but otherwise one anyone by the grace of Krishna can preach at some level to everyone and the practical example of that is our book distributors who they meet all kinds of people and they distribute books to them. Now we may say, well, we want to preach in a more more uh, what's that? It sounds like a marriage party. Hmm? Oh, I see. Now, for instance, if you want to go in the university and preach, well, if one's read Prabhupada's books and has faith in them, then certainly Krishna will give the intelligence how to do that. There are many examples of devotees who are doing that. So, there may be some advantage if one has some mundane educational qualification. But the thing is, that we have to meet so many people in preaching. Say you have, say you have a, a degree in biology. Well, that won't help you much if you're, if you're preaching in the chemistry class or in the economics class or in, in the general on the university. One may have the some more idea how to say things in a in a quasi intellectual manner. But Krishna will give the intelligence, actually. Another thing that I've seen, I don't have a university degree, is that from what I can see in most cases, this mundane education is highly overrated anyway. Most of these students in the universities and also the professors, they're pretty damn stupid actually. If you go and preach among them, you'll, you'll find that they mostly they don't have any very logical way of thinking and they don't even 
I find that most of our devotees who have been reading Prabhupada's books, they're, they're actually far more intelligent than the average so-called intellectual in the university. Krishna gives the intelligence. So you don't have to be afraid and think, oh, they're so educated. They don't actually know so much. And they're, their intelligence is spoiled by meat-eating and sex life and intoxication. And they, they don't think very clearly or nicely, actually. So if you study Prabhupada's books, Prabhupada, you'll get all the intelligence. Prabhupada was meeting PhDs and professors and they couldn't stand before Prabhupada. Prabhupada, you say, well, we can't imitate Prabhupada. But what does this mean? We can't... Prabhupada showed us how to preach. This idea that's given, well, we can't imitate Prabhupada. That this is sometimes used to say that we should act in a manner completely different from Prabhupada. This is a, mi this is a misunderstanding of the statement that we should, we should know what is the difference between Anusaran following and Anukaran, which means imitating. So Anusaran means to follow the preaching example. And Anukaran is to attempt to come to, uh, attempt to act on some spiritual platform that is beyond us. Krishna will give intelligence. To preach Krishna conscious, we need far more than any other qualification. The qualification is to study and hear Prabhupada's books and practice Krishna consciousness very carefully. And Krishna will give all intelligence. There are so many examples. Tribhuvanath Prabhu. He was doing festivals and he had no mundane education practically. He was an orphan. He could just read and write. But he was preaching among all kinds of people all over the world for so many years. If we think that preaching is an intellectual activity, then we may think that we need some mundane qualification. But it's a spiritual activity. Krishna gives the intelligence that the, the words heard from Guru and Shastra, they cut through all this intellectual nonsense and come to the essence. If we think that preaching means we have to match mundane intellectuals in their mental speculative word jugglery, then we're going to get lost anyway. Then we can't preach anyway. Then we're just on their mundane platform. Krishna consciousness is on a higher platform. You don't need to engage. In fact, if we try to engage in word jugglery, we'll, we'll be lost. If we try to match them intellectually, then we're just engaging in their mental intellectual game. But preaching Krishna conscious means to speak the knowledge of Shastra with faith in Krishna, which cuts through all this intellectual nonsense. Vidyate Hridhya Granthis, Chidyante Sarva Sanshaya. The words of Shastra, they, they pierce the knot on the heart and cut all misgivings. People who say like this, we can't preach like Prabhupada, these are the people who never make any devotees. They never convince anyone to take up Krishna conscious. They never convince anyone to surrender to Krishna because they themselves are not convinced about it. I guarantee. Look at all of them. All of them who say, we can't imitate Prabhupada, their preaching is all practically mundane. They're just trying to make a nice impression among people rather than taking the mercy from the parampara and delivering Krishna. They're just engaging in the mundane game of I'm nice to you and you're nice to me. Personally, I was very attracted to this Krishna consciousness movement because I was sick of this false game that mundane intellectuals play in which they speak very politely to... Actually, many times not politely, but 
It's, it's just a game of mental posturing. Devotees were the first real people I ever met who weren't just making some profile or pretending to be something they're not. So get on the spiritual platform and Krishna will help. If you have a university degree, okay. But far more important is to read Prabhupada's books. That's one line of Prabhupada's books is worth all the university education in the world a million times over. It's still not worth even one drop of ink in Prabhupada's books. Call that fanaticism? Well, call it whatever you like. Some devotees in their lectures often quote this, Dele kaladu jo kayad wo bi pishtai or jo nahi kayo wo bi pishtai. What is the meaning of this? It means one who has tasted a ladu from Delhi is lamenting and one who has not lamented, tasted is also lamenting. Delhi kaladu is slang for prostitute. <laughs> People come from the villages to Delhi and there are plenty of prostitutes in Delhi. Something sweet to taste. So the mean, did Prabhupada quote this? Yes, those who are quoting got it from Prabhupada. In which context? In this context. Those who have engaged in sex life, they are lamenting and those who are not, they are also lamenting. means that those who have engaged in sex life, they're lamenting that, well, it wasn't as good as I thought it would be, or I got AIDS, or... And those who didn't engage in it, they're, they're thinking, well, it would be good if I did. So the best thing is to give up all thought altogether. That's the motto of the story, as Prabhupada quoted it. Is it... Enormous for Iskon devotee if preaching spirit doesn't. Is it what? Unnormous, abnormal for an Iskon devotee if the preaching spirit doesn't come after many years of practicing Krishna consciousness. Well, what makes you think you are practicing Krishna consciousness if there's no preaching spirit? One who is practicing will certainly want to share with others. How can we approach new preaching fields by introducing step by step the whole philosophy and avoid the danger of watering down the philosophy for the sake of being sensitive and overloading the listeners? Hmm. There's a lot of propaganda these days about being sensitive, which is good in one sense considering that devotees in the past were so insensitive in some areas that they, in ISKCON 70s hippie slang, burned out preaching fields. Even we were talking about the other day about small countries, how if, you're, if you distribute books in a very insensitive manner in a small country and then people very quickly get burned out but even the whole of America got burned out huge country because of the devotees insensitive tactics overly aggressive and the whole country in the whole country there was a very bad impression of our movement and whole preaching fields were the airports were closed down by legal statutes so some sensitivity is required. At the same time, in the name of sensitivity, what's being propagated in our movement these days is often some kind of mundane so-called compassion. So real sensitivity comes, real sensitivity comes from the spiritual platform that we sincerely desire to deliver Krishna to others. When there was so much harassment of people in America to get them to take books, we weren't really thinking about 
how everyone can become Krishna conscious. We were just thinking that by any means give them the book. Not thinking that they might hate the book. Having got it, if we engage in such tactics that they, that they feel very disturbed by the manner of delivering it. So at least in the field of book distribution, throughout the world, more or less, it seems that our devotees are much more mature nowadays. We should learn from <coughs> devotees like Vijay Prabhu, who is going around the world and encouraging devotees in book distribution. He himself is Mr. Cool. He distributes books, but he doesn't get disturbed. It's very easy to get disturbed when we're trying to distribute books because we have a feeling that, well, everyone should take the book. Why don't they take it? He's just a fool. He should take the book. But if we act with people like that, then they be, it doesn't help. So, book distribution is a good opportunity for putting into practice Trinada Pisa Nichena Tarora Pisa Hishnana Amanina Amana Dena Kirtaniya Sadaharihi Offering respect to others. So devotees were in America were telling me that they would offer their politely not just politely but with, you know with a little push also but pleasantly offer people books and then make their presentation and if people don't want to take they say all right then well have a great day anyway and sometimes the people think oh they're so nice that they're offering have a good day even though I didn't. all right well maybe I'll take your book after all so sensitivity is required but pushing is also required I remember after I came back to England where I I joined, I was allowed to join this Krishna conscious movement after being away for many years and there was some program in the temple and I came out of the temple and uh, there was a public program, so many outside people were there and there was a book display and the devotee on the book table, one visitor asked him what is the price of the book and he said well, it's three pounds, I'm afraid. If you say, I'm afraid, in England, that means you're saying like, well, I'm sorry, it's so expensive. And then the person would just walk to him and say, why do you say I'm afraid? So you should say, it's only three pounds. He said, no, I was told to say that so that people don't think we're trying to push it on them. But the result is they don't buy the book. <coughs> so what was the purpose of saying, I'm, you know, apologizing that it's so high price? Well, it's not high price anyway. You say, it's, it's only three pounds. That just covers the printing cost and a little more. But the knowledge you'll get in this book is, is worth more than all the pounds that will ever come into your pocket throughout your whole life. So we shouldn't be afraid to present Krishna consciousness. And in, in different circumstances, we have to be sensitive how to preach. But preaching means to be bold also. If we're not a little bold, then we can't preach. So there has to... Not a little bold, we have to be quite bold. So there has to be some balance between boldness and the strong desire to give Krishna consciousness and sensitiveness to their conditioned state. That they don't... So in preaching, actually all the people should fall down on the feet of the devotees and say, thank you so much, you're saving me from the clutches of birth and death. But they don't say that and they don't think like that. They think, they might, well, who's this person bothering me? So, without accepting their attitude towards life, we should also understand that they do think like that and be sensitive to that so that they don't become... Um, overly disturbed. Although one thing we should know, if we are actually preaching, then definitely some people are going to get disturbed. For sure. If no one's getting disturbed, there's something wrong. We're not preaching properly. That generally we can say that.
Please could you speak on Sadashiv? Who is he? That I just spoke the other day. You can get the CD. There's an opportunity for you to get the CD of the lecture when it becomes available. What is the Krishna conscious understanding of destiny and free will? This is an FAQ, frequently asked question. Is everything destined? Well, if everything was absolutely fixed, then how did it get like that? If we are absolutely bound by our previous karmas, then how our activity makes our future destiny, doesn't it? But if we have no free will, then we can't make any future destiny. So there must be free will also. So both things are there. Destiny, that means we, a general fate is fixed. But according to how we, the choices we make within that situation, it may come out quite differently. <coughs> Shama Sunda Prabhu, who you may know, he's Srila Prabhupada's disciple. He's here. He's a uh, an astrologer, not not one of these uh, teach yourself astrology in 30 days kind of astrologers. But he actually studied with a genuine Indian astrologer, with a genuine parampara for several years. If you want to learn any Vedic science, you just don't pick up a book, teach yourself. It does. The guru is the must be there for every Vedic science. So anyway, he was telling me that um, in, some, in someone's chart, under a certain circumstance, you may find that someone is living in a building where there are many restrictions and he's under control and not allowed to go out and so many different rules and regulations. And you may conclude that he's going to be in prison. But it could also be that he's living in an ashram. In many ways they're similar. That's what Haridash Thakur said when he was put in prison. He said, no, oh, you're all very lucky. You're all restricted here from sense gratification. And, uh, <laughs> so... You just hunt Chan Hare Krishna and you can stay here forever. <laughs> they weren't very happy to hear that. Then he gave them the benediction. You'll all be released within two or three days. But go on chanting Hare Krishna. So the, th the thing is, if someone in his destiny, he has that kind of situation, according to how he uses his free will, he might end up in prison or he might end up in an ashram. One may be, one is given a certain kind of template. You know what a template means? Who uses computers? You should know what it. It means there's a basic kind of pattern, but then what you do, you have free will within that. The example is given that you you uh, you can choose to buy a ticket to get on a plane. So you're on the flight from Calcutta to London. So you made the choice. Now that has, while you're on the plane, that's restricted your movement. You can't, there's a limited number of things you can do. You can't play football, for instance, on a plane. You can't go swimming on a plane. There's a limited number of things. There are, there, but you have choices what you can do, but they're limited by the situation. That's a rough example. So the, there are limitations, both gross and subtle, according to the situation in which we have fashioned ourselves into. But within that situation, we have free choice. We have some level of choice. We might, on the plane, strike up a conversation with someone and that turns into a business deal or a romance 
Or we might drink too much and then get drunk and get and misbehave and get arrested when we land. That ha- that could happen also. So there are within that situation we can act in various ways that are favorable for our future or unfavorable. It seems to me that reading Prabhupada's books is as important as chanting our rounds, but sometimes we forget that, especially if there is some special service or festivals. Can you give some advice how to manage to read every day without exception? Well, there might be some exceptions, just like festivals. There may be. We may, be, we may have service so much at festival times that we don't have time. Or at, at this festival, most of you don't have service, but the, the local devotees, they're all very busy. We say, this festival is going on so nicely organized because the local devotees are very busy performing so many services. So it may be sometime, then you make up some other time, that's all. We can't say, you know, there's just like, it may be some situation, there's no one, the, the, the pujari who is, or the devotee who is going to cook the bog offering for the Lord, suddenly fell down with a high fever, there's no one else available, can you cook the offering? No, I didn't read today. You can't, you have to do. We have to see, do the needful to serve the Lord. But uh, then you make up some other time. Don't worry, Krishna will look after you. We should have that confidence. Krishna will look after us. Krishna will help us. So, if there's no other questions... Oh, that was premature. There is another question. The body was having discussion and telling me that ISKCON is becoming fanatic. They are not allowing Grihastha to initiate devotees. That's rubbish. There's no such thing as Grihastha is not allowed to initiate devotees. And they give names of previous Acharyas who are married and sannyasi should not and sannyasi should not initiate. I don't know. This is a, what is this? What is this question? You're saying they're not allowing Grihastas to initiate, but there are so many Grihastas who are initiating in ISKCON. Only who should initiate? Sanyasi. Only sannyasi should? No, there's no such thing. In our movement, who's initiating? We have Ravindra Sri Prabhu, Virabahu Prabhu, now Kratu Prabhu. There are some Grihastas who initiate. Generally, they not many have come forward to do so, but they're, they're all, it's not, there's no such rule or any such thing that Grihastas can't initiate. There are some other, Sankarshan in America, he's also initiated. Niranjan? Maybe, I don't know, from Chitrakut, I was, I'm not sure, I think he's initiating also. What about in Russia, Chaitanya Chandra Charan, he's Grihastana, he's initiating? No. So there's no such thing, it's just some, someone said something, why do you believe everything everyone says? You go crazy if you believe everything everyone says. There's no such thing, why, you want to start initiating also? <laughs> Not yet. You're the guru of your family. There's no such thing. No such idea is there. There's no discrimination against. But generally the generally the sannyasis are more engaged in the preaching mission because directly because Krihastas have family responsibilities to maintain their families. Otherwise there's no such thing. Oh, all right. Just every time I think it's going to be finished and there's there's always more. Good. <coughs> what is that? Tetrinvatam rasam rasaganam svadu svadu padeva. How does that verse begin? Vayam tu na vitripyama. We are not 
satiated by hearing Harikata, by hearing more and more, we gain, we taste more and more. Or is it Vayam tu Navichapyama Uttama Shloka Bhartaye Vikrame? By hearing about the wonderful activities of Uttama Shloka. By tasting that more and more. Tatshinvatam, by hearing that. Rasa Jnanam, we're tasting the knowledge of Rasa at every step. So, what's the question? By selling Mahaprasad, is it alright to maintain a temple? No, selling Prasad is a, that's been going on traditionally in India for. It's a, in Puri, you could say Puri is one of the most traditional. Jagannath temple, one of the most traditional temples in India, the Ananda Bazaar. Prasad is sold. So there's no restriction against selling prasad. It can be given away and it can be sold also. Here, pizzas, cakes, well, what can we do? Well, again, I spoke about this the other day. That we Better offer Krishna what he likes and better get our taste buds in line with what Krishna likes because if we go back to God and we say, oh, where's the pizzas? And we say, okay, well, back there on earth. See you later. Go back to earth. You want pizzas? You don't have them here in Vrindavan. So you have to go back to earth to eat your pizza. In the spiritual world, it's shukta shakadi bhaji nalita kushmanda dali dalna dukta tumbi. How to develop faith in Guru and Krishna? This is already I think that was the first one of this series. I read in your book that association with Prabhupada more after his departure from this world. I personally experience this. How to understand this? Not by any material means. All right, we'll finish there. No, still going on. Could you explain what Shatarpa meant if he thought about prasad, prasad distribution? What Prabhupada meant when he spoke about prasad distribution? What he meant by prasad distribution? Because what did Prabhupada mean by this? Too general a question. Can you be more specific? I mean, generally, prasad distribution means we cook and offer food to Krishna with devotion and we distribute it. That's called prasad distribution. That's what Prabhupada meant. That's straightforward, isn't it? Is not this sometimes maybe it's a project of mass distribution of prasadam, just make some, some seeds and uh, offer? No, you not mass prasadam, but it's prasadam, we're making these packages, then we go to the street and we sell to the people. Sometimes they are preaching directly, just... Yeah. Most of the time it's like means to call it Lakshmi. Selling prasad as a means to collect Lakshmi. We just spoke about that. Well, there's no objection to it. Of course, Prabhupada emphasized book distribution. Can be done. I mean, Prabhupada more for prasad distribution for income, he more stressed restaurants, but... There's nothing wrong with selling prasadam like that. I mean, I can't, I can't find anything wrong intrinsically. You, you, you have some feeling there's something. There's just a, they have in chat some prasadam institution that is always meeting there will be some some discussion if it's preaching activity or not. It's like selling to the Is it preaching activity or isn't? Well, no, it's. Um, well, certainly Prabhupada didn't stress it like he stressed book distribution. Prabhupada stressed that book distribution will have a tremendous effect in changing the consciousness of the world's population. 
Although that prasad in this wish will help people, but like I say, Prabhupada didn't stress it so much. Prabhupada, even at least once, Prabhupada said that book distribution is Vaishya activity. You saw that? Yeah. He said sales, it's Vaishya activity. Sometimes he said it's Brahminical. Often he said it's transcendental. <coughs> so it would seem it depends on the mentality of the persons engaged in it also. Why don't you write the question down? What happens to a person who only reads Prabhupada's books like Bhagavatam but doesn't chant? It means he's not reading Prabhupada's books because the Bhagavatam tells us to chant. And then we're just reading intellectually. That's not reading devotionally. If we're reading, then we should follow what is said. So they're not actually reading at all. They're reading from the mind platform not from the soul platform. There may be mundane scholars who read our books with the purpose of criticizing them. They don't get the same result. This is the last one. Why should we not offer obeisances to devotees in the temple hall? Because Krishna is there and all obeisances should be offered to him. He is the center of all activities in the temple room especially. That's why. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.